I think the biggest takeaway from all of this is we need to realize everything in balance even the best ideas, the greatest tools out there, when taken to an extreme, can be really problematic. Hey, welcome back to Rewild, where we talk about environment, psychology, and other interesting things. Today, we're riffing off of the theme of transpersonal psychology to talk with you a little bit today about the concept of 3D and 5D. So what is 3D and 5D consciousness? Um, this is something you might not typically hear about on a psychology station, but since we are an offshoot of transpersonal psychology, we can talk about it. Um, 3D and the 5D consciousness is something that I've been seeing pop up in new wave circles, uh, new age, sorry, not new wave, uh, for the last uh, five years or so, it's become very, very popular. And last night I was looking for something kind of relaxing to listen to at night and I clicked on a video I should have known <laughs> but it was a little bit about starseed stuff and you know uh, spiritual ascension and I thought eh, maybe this is gonna be a better type of media to digest right before bed something not too stressful but of course it ended up sending me into a little bit of an existential question that I wanted to address today so for those of you who are not familiar, the concept of 3D consciousness is the real world, the world that we're in now. Uh, the aches and pains, the broken down cars, the financial problems, the health issues. 3D consciousness kind of indicates our connection to the material world as we know it, and kind of like the logic around the material world of how things work on a physical level. I don't know why we skip 4D. Um, I think 4D is just like sound, you know, if you think about like a two dimensional, three dimensional, and I think fourth dimension is sound, but the fifth dimension is this thing that people like to talk about in the new age spiritual community to indicate kind of a transformation, transcendence of the 3D. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about this today because as I was listening to some of this content that I'd kind of shelved and forgotten about for the last few years, I was reminded by the fact that, or reminded of the fact that this stuff is dangerous. And so I wanted to talk about how it is dangerous. I'm going to talk about the well-meaning aspects of it that um, are less problematic where I think it comes from. and how we can use these metaphors, or even if you're really into this, the reality of 3D and 5D transcendence or consciousness to our advantage in a psychologically healthy way. So let's get into it. One of the things in this video that I saw recently, which is unremarkable, it's kind of the same trope over and over again. There were two kind of troubling aspects of it. The first was this idea that humanity and the world is besieged by demons. So we've heard this a lot in uh, Christian and Abrahamic religions, and there's been a lot of criticism of the New Age movement saying that, you know, a lot of New Age concepts are directly taken from Abrahamic religions and then just sort of repackaged, right? Um, and so that was something that I kind of was struck by, that Sometimes in religious uh, circles, we talk about this thing of like demons or demonology or negative energy, and we talk about it as if it's sort of ubiquitous and kind of difficult to battle and just like cosmically omnipotent, right? Um, omnipresent. And I think that is helpful when it comes to auditing yourself, right? I think to some extent you might. Um, if you are a more uh, new age kind of like Christian, you might think of original sin as being more closer to like karma than like an anti-sex thing. Maybe original sin might be more, oh my gosh, I, this is such a hard thing to talk about. Um, but you know, it could be symbolic of something else, you know, something that a little bit more reasonable than, you know, sex negativity and guilt. And I think that this is something that a lot of spiritual people really struggle with as a whole, no matter what religion or faith you come from. This idea that people believe in spirituality, people work in religious 
arenas because they believe that it makes them a better person. That can be really difficult for people that we might consider like the faithful because oftentimes, you know, there are caveats, there are nuances to the complexities of life that um, can really create issues for us to, you know, really make sure that we don't take an ideology, um, be it political or religious, and, you know, transmute it into something that is not really positive anymore or healthy. So I'm seeing this with 3D and 5D consciousness, and I'll tell you a story. A few years ago, right at the height of, you know, this big global um, thing we all went through, I had a girlfriend who was anti-traditional um, medical vaccinations, things like that, and she was very certain that uh, COVID was being created as a result of um, the three the 5G. <laughs> and and for those of you who have seen this, like this was terribly debunked. This is it was it was pretty crazy. When I heard this, I was like, oh man, like my friend, you know, my friends suffered, I actually think, with um, some like mental health issues that might have also been exacerbating this, that magical thinking was something this person was especially prone to. But it really deeply upset me because I realized like, wow, by spreading this misinformation, it's really become life or death. And I think that the new age community has a lot of examples of this. And I've kind of been wanting to do more examples of this, but last night when I was seeing this 3D to 5D video, I realized just this one is like a good short introduction to some of the challenges of this stuff. But I also critique it with love because I believe that spirituality, I don't just believe this, there's research that backs that having a spiritual path, having um, you know spiritual solace, this is a very psychological health, psychologically healthy thing for a lot of people. There is a joke in the psychology community that oftentimes people become more spiritual when they experience hardship. Um, it's not really a joke, it's just an observation, and some of us think it's a little bit funny that, you know, somebody who is never religious before suddenly becomes incredibly devout when they end up in prison. And to a, a large extent, one of the reasons human beings are attracted to spirituality is because it really does give us something to hang on to when the going gets tough. When your 3D, real physical world, is not working well for you, Sometimes the power of prayer, the power of manifestation, the power of faith and belief and hope is really all you have to hang on to. Um, and it is fortifying, you know, your strength and helping you to kind of move forward in this way. So the idea that demons are all around us, you know, are like besieging us and stuff, I I don't know, like I, I can kind of see it. I, I could see the metaphor being valid, you know, Greed is part of the human condition. Um, violence is part of the human condition. Sadness and mental health struggles are part of the human condition. And if you wanted to kind of take it in a less literal sense, you might say that these are demonic forces or these, these are the essence of evil that are always with us, that we always have to battle. But for people who struggle to stay grounded in material reality, I wonder if the notion that there's demons everywhere and like all of this stuff is coming out to get you and we have to be vigilant all the time and it's just getting worse and worse, like it can be very disempowering and it, it very much borders on if not is completely in the realm of conspiratorial. And I think that one of the biggest problems with conspiracy theories is there are many things in this world that are you know, human rights violations, injustices that are proven, that are right in our faces, that people could be protesting and addressing. But if we are distracted by the illusion of an omnipotent evil through a conspiracy theory, first of all, we can't prove it, so we can't take it to court or address it through lobbying or any other kind of political agency. And secondly, it creates this illusion in our minds of evils that are unsurmountable, that just exist, that we cannot fight, um, that are that are so big that you know only God, only something so much bigger than yourself could ever address it. If it works for you, if that's something that helps you feel safer, if that's a metaphor that's working for your life and it's not making you an unhealthy person, 
you know, then go for it. But I could easily see how this might exacerbate someone's existing mental health problems, or it could help somebody to become more entrenched in this idea that they don't have any control over their life when that's only half true. There are many things in life that we don't have any control over or little control over. And I think that's kind of where God and spirituality as a salve on those wounds kind of can come in and soothe us and help us get through those difficult times. But there are plenty of other things in our life that we have a lot of control over. Um, we control who we interface with in a lot of cases. We control what kind of career trajectory we choose in a lot of cases. Um, for those of us who are not imprisoned, we control where we get to go, you know, what kind of car you drive, how you speak to other people, how you react emotionally to situations in your life. You have a lot of control. And I think these ideas, these conspiracy theories can kind of disrupt that. The last and final thing that I started thinking about that's kind of along the same vein with the problematic aspects of 3D to 5D consciousness is when you are in the 5D or when you are presumably trying to get into the 5D and trying to ascend material consciousness, I think you really risk becoming blind to the world around you. And it's also kind of a risk of maybe um, becoming less compassionate for the real world struggles of people around you and possibly becoming irresponsible about the things that you have material control over in your life that might be difficult. There's this really great old story about uh, somebody visiting a witch doctor because they wanted a new job. And I love this story because I think it paints a really good picture of the duality between the material and the physical. And in this story, the client goes to a practitioner and says, hey, I'm trying to get a job. Can you do this voodoo spell for me so I can get a new job? And the practitioner says, yeah, yeah, here's the candles, here's the incantation, here's all the stuff you gotta do to pray for your new job. You know, there you go. Person comes back a week or two later and says, you know what, I want my money back. I never got that job that we prayed for, and I think you're a fraud. And you know what the practitioner says to that person? They said, hmm, you lit the candles, you did the spell the way I told you to, you did all the steps, okay, okay, let's think, let's think. Did you submit the job application? <laughs> and of course, the client goes, oh, no, I didn't, I didn't do that part. Right? And so I think that that's a really good story for whatever religion you're from, you know, it doesn't, you know, whatever you're praying for, whatever you're visualizing, whatever you're manifesting into your life, have you submitted the real world 3D paperwork? <laughs> have you done the real world 3D work in order to allow God, if you believe in a God, to, you know, bring miracles into your life? You actually have to be the physical living form vessel for those blessings to come in your life. You have to physically do things in the world. We can't just pray for stuff and expect it to show up without any physical effort. Some people do once in a while, you know, miracles, I believe in them. But overall, I think there's a little bit of a risk of over identification with a fantasy realm and under identification with the material conditions when we feel overwhelmed. One of the most important aspects of this for me is especially when it comes to climate change and climate collapse. The deaths of hundreds of thousands of people every year from climate-related um, distress, and the deaths of millions of animals, and I think even species during the six months extinction. These are no joke. And one of the aspects of Abrahamic religious beliefs that I see popping up in the New Age community is kind of this fire and brimstone belief in the end of days. And it certainly feels like we're in the end of days right now when it comes to the realities of environmental destruction, the realities of people struggling to pay rent, the realities of pestilence, right? There's a lot going on in our world that is really scary and it really does seem to align with that. But, you know, um, people in the darkest year of history, I think it was like 500 AD, 500 something AD when a bunch of volcanoes blew up and darkened the sky for a year, they probably thought they were in the end times too. Um, the pestilence that hit people during the Black Plague, people probably thought it was the end times too. I have friends who are in their 70s, almost 80s now, who never had children because they believed that they were in the end times. 
And that was one of their wisdom pieces to give to me to kind of brush off that idea so I could kind of move on with my life and accept the fact that life, being alive, it's perilous. <laughs> you know, eventually we're all gonna die and death is really scary. And one of the functions of religion and spirituality is giving us a place to go after death, giving us a get out of death free card, you know, giving us um, soothing and consolation for the fear of death, helping us to not be afraid anymore. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Um, from a physics standpoint, energy is neither created nor destroyed. And I like to think about that a lot, whether you are religious or not, that we do live on forever, even from the tiniest, most biological, you know, atomic levels. We, we go on forever in terms of our energy, the people we impact in our life, the legacy we leave behind. Um, and I think a lot of these spiritual tools, they should be treated that way. And if we start taking them very, very literally in a way that starts to hurt us, you know, it's, it's worth exploring what these ideas mean to us and why we have them. My biggest hope for people who are really interested in the 3D to 5D consciousness, and I'm amongst you, I think about this stuff a lot as a spiritualist, is that we don't neglect the 3D and we don't create sort of a holier than thou collective psychosis around this idea that some of us are the chosen ones who get to evolve past this crappy world while other people are just going to stay in the 3D because they suck and they're too negative in their consciousness. This is really unfair for people who are dealing with difficult situations that we can't relate to if we have more relative privilege than they do. Um, there can be a level of gaslighting if you have a friend who's in a violent relationship or who is struggling with their finances and you dismiss them because they're in 3D consciousness. I think that's really damaging and antisocial. And so as much as I think positive thinking is important, I also think toxic positivity is coming into play a little bit in these new age communities and discussions about what it means to truly evolve. I do think that humanity is going through a big evolution, and I do think that it is a spiritual one, and it has to be in order for us to repair our ecosystems and save our planet. But I don't think that that comes with spiritual ego. I don't think that comes with neglecting to tend our physical gardens or neglecting to help our neighbors find food, shelter, and safety. I think that's all wrapped up in the same burrito. And we need to learn how to pray, have faith, think positively, while also doing the work, submitting the job application, feeding our homeless and hungry neighbors, supporting legislation to change things, saving ecosystems and saving lives. These are not imaginary things. And I think the 3D to 5D community tries to imply that a lot, that 5D is more real than 3D, and it's not. They are metaphors of one another and they are reflective of one another. And you can't escape a bad situation just by closing your eyes and trying to imagine something else. I don't think that's how this universe works, and I don't think that's why we were put here for that. So that's, you know, the short of this small discussion about New Age spirituality and some of the critiques I have of how it is being portrayed. I don't think the people who believe in this stuff are necessarily wrong at all. I'm in fact quite fascinated by that and I'm really hopeful that we are going through this big transition that is a positive one, that there is light at the end of the tunnel, that we will come out on the other side in, you know, a ecotopian, you know, space falc kind of situation that's really beautiful. But I really implore people not to not to neglect their physical reality and not to chastise other people who are living in 3D, as they like to say. Thank you so much for listening to this. I hope it was helpful and illuminating to someone out there. Um, I'll be back every weekend or so, and we'll see you next time. Take care.